Got him. That's the big one. Hang on. Oh, got him. Got him. <laughs> okay. I just lost a croc. And you really got to just freaking lob. Okay, that's actually a really good spot right there. Okay, drop the range down. Drop it even more. What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are on a hike. We are bank fishing today. And we're using our BFS the old Cast King Zephyr with the Shimano Sensolite. I love this setup and I never get to use it. So I decided, you know what? Today we're doing semi ultralight fishing with the BFS and it's gonna be a blast from the bank. Uh, we're also testing out, more importantly, something that one of our subscribers, B. Dooley, sent us, which is this Garmin Striker cast. This is a castable sonar. I think that it is uh, way more affordable than we'll say some of the deeper uh, products, but we're not sure if it's as good. So our goal today, get this out on the water, see if it helps us identify some structure, maybe find some fish. I haven't had any of the sub $200 sonars, and I've tested a few out, really show fish. The deeper chirp did. It did a pretty good job of it. It's probably the best out there that I've tried so far. That comes with a price tag of $299 though. This one's $179, so it's a bit more affordable. It's a Garmin, so I've got some faith in it, but I don't know. We're gonna put it to the test today. If you guys have tried this out before, of course, let me know what your thoughts were in the comments below, and I'll share some screen recordings like I have with the deeper sonar in the past, things like that, and hopefully that's helpful for you if you're on the market looking for a castable sonar. And if you're bank fishing, I'd be surprised if you weren't, because it really does help when you can't see what the heck is out there? I have no idea what the structure is. So I'm gonna wade in the water a little bit um, because we got a lot of growth here between me and the water. It's very shallow on the shoreline. So I'm just gonna walk the shoreline pretty much from the beach over there all the way past. There's a little dam over there and a few other things. So I think this would be a lot of fun. If you guys like the content, be sure to subscribe, smash the like, ring that notification bell so you can see when we post more content. And come back Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. We go live right here on YouTube. It's a blast. We'd love to see you there and talk to you in chat. Let's get after it. Let's see if this thing works. Quarter temp is pretty good. Pretty freaking good. Kind of one of the last warm days here for us. So we brought out the old chitty chat. Chitty chat, chitty chat. Micro chitty chat. Tends to do really well. Just got followed all the way in by a gilly. No. Eat it. No, you're fine. <laughs> so we're on the BFS setup right now. Wanted to go semi ultralight. Throw my quarter ounce chatter baits around. Actually, I think these are eighth ounce. All right, folks, here's what we're here to test out. We have the Garmin Striker Cast GPS. And uh, I think it's pretty cool. This thing comes with a nice little leash here probably gonna get a mess of tangles in it today. Save these for later. So what's nifty about this is that they thought of including like this little thing right here so that we can just huck it out there, pull it back in. Pretty much the perfect like bank fishing setup, I would say, doing something like this. So here's what the box looks like. Pretty nifty little guy. This particular model runs about 179, so it's a bit cheaper than like the deeper sonars that we tested out but obviously we need to see how it works and compare it to the deeper sonar. And if you guys haven't seen that, we've reviewed the deeper sonar start, which is the cheaper model. It's under hundred bucks. And we reviewed the deeper sonar chirp, which is definitely the better of the two, but it's also like 299. So, I mean, take your poison, right? Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to figure out how to cast this thing out here without losing it. Otherwise I'm swimming and I'm going to pull up the app. So we open up the app. We're logged in. I drop it in the water. It's going to turn on right now. Come on. Yep. It's on. Cool. All right. So it's in the water. It turns on. What are we seeing? Are we seeing anything yet? Let's change our settings here. Our range should only be like 10 feet. Uh, we'll do We'll do like 15 feet, 20 feet. There we go. Okay, so I'm in zero feet of water right now, but if we huck it out there a little bit, also the wind is blowing towards our bank here, so it's kind of cool. It's gonna come back to me, even if I lose it. All right, looking at some cover. Wonder what kind of settings we can do on this. Gain is adjustable, so we can adjust the gain up high if we want. Oh, that looks better. 
Move the gain up, that looks good. We've got a map option. Okay, map is kind of nifty. It looks like you can record a trip. That's interesting. All right, let me give this thing a real good huck out there though and see what we see. All right, here comes the fun part, right? I'm just gonna go like straight up cowboy this thing. Oh God. <laughs> That's actually the play. Put this around my keys so I don't lose it. How about that? What we're gonna do, I'm gonna straight up just like huck this thing out there. Okay, so we don't we don't have very far to throw this thing, but let's see what we see on my phone. Okay, so we're like at five feet, a little bit of cover. I'm not seeing any fish marks. So I'm not sure like how well this is gonna do with finding fish at this moment it's definitely finding cover okay that's cool you can go landscape okay drop the range down drop it even more it's kind of nifty you can see like that range change instantly uh, again right now it's in like four feet of water like i i can see through the water right now so i know what i'm looking at just not sure what fish are going to look like on this so let me fish for a little bit and we'll come back we'll see if we see anything different what i really want to do is get close to this dam this dam holds fish like none other before i get to the dam itself let's fish around it i should get inhaled right freaking now i see a fish so you got it got it got it got it he's got it yep saw him come up on it nice dude the bfs bite is pretty freaking fun you guys BFS bite is fun. All right, so now that we know there's fish here, well, let's cast this thing out. Let's see if we see the fish on the sonar, because I think that's the key if you're gonna wanna buy one of these things, you know? All right, let's let this guy go. Oh, ho, ho, did you see that? Oh my God, he just did an air walk. That was sick. All right, one of the reasons I brought my heavy stick was so that I can cast the Garmin cast. What did I tell you about the dam though? Holding them fishies. By the way, a great time to mention that this is all thanks to our buddy B. Dooley. He sent this Garmin in to us. So thanks to awesome people like B. Dooley, we don't have to spend a thousand dollars to test everything. Okay, so cool feature with this one. It comes with extra clips. Not that they're expensive or anything, but it's just kind of a nice old thing that they did. Got pretty heavy fluoro on here. I'm not too scared about it. But I am going to tie a Palomar knot. Pretty sure Chatterbait's the play, so I'm pretty sure I can catch fish either way. But while I'm out here, I might as well test the striker out and uh, see how it goes. So I highly recommend that you guys tie something like a Palomar knot or just a good strong knot around a clip like this. Or just go straight braid, you know, something strong enough to deal with this. Also, don't throw your extra line in the water. Put it in your pocket, please. It's a not good for the fish. This is just going to be our Garmin setup. Boom. So now it's castable. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get my phone out after I cast it out there. Bomb a cast way out, and then I can reel it up to where I want it. And then we're going to pull up ye old sonar. Okay, it's already better. Let's change our range. So as you slide, I do kind of like that it changes your depth reading on the right side of the screen there, like on the fly. So I'm gonna go to, all right, so I'm one hand reeling, as you can see, just trying to get this thing over the water column where I want it. All right, so I'm still not seeing fish. Oh, there's an arch. Okay, see an arch. Let's see what else we see. So you can see the garment out here just kind of working its way back in. We're seeing sub 10 feet now. I can see bottom is in deep red. See the cover is shallow at about 9.4 feet. Cover is coming up to about seven feet. Good information. We got temperature now, 68.3. That's helpful for sure. All right, Garmin is sliding in pretty quick here. The wind is good for us today. All right, cover's coming way up. Bottom is up to five feet. Cover still super shallow. Still not seeing any fish, like no marks, nothing. I'm gonna give this one more cast. Let's give one good cast over by the dam. And you really gotta just freaking lob it. Okay, that's actually a really good spot right there. That's exactly where I want it. And all I'm doing is when I cast it out, I'll just one hand reel to keep the line from being too slack. Okay, so we're back, sub 10 feet again. Still not seeing like any marks. It's kind of strange, right? 
What if I turn up the gain? Let's go gain like maxed out. Oh, that's too much. All right, we don't want that. Yeah, I kind of like the gain at like 60%-ish. 60%, that looks way better. All right, we're already super shallow. Still not seeing any fishy. A skitter bag, oh, no, those look like fish. There we go. Four feet there, you see that arch? It's kind of broken up, probably because I was messing with the gain. It looks like an arch. Yeah. That looks like an arch, super shallow. We got some stuff going on. It's enough dinking around, I want to fish. So far, I would say this is nowhere near as good a reading as I was getting with the deepers, but it is $130 cheaper and you can probably also get it on sale. So that's something to keep in mind. But let's fish this area. And if we can, we already caught one. If we can catch more, then we'll show that you gotta kind of take this as more of a structure reading. Got a perch follow, that's a pretty good perch. Holy cow, that is a nice perch. Dang, that was a good sized perch. That would have been nice to catch. They've been a little finicky, a little tentative. They're not like chomping at this thing right now. So I'm practicing a real pause technique. Let it fall for a second first, then I'll reel two, three times. Let it fall for a second, reel. Got another follow. Dude, they're just super finicky about it right now. We go all the way. Oh, that's a big gill. Big old gill came in. All right, let's get a little closer to the dam here. They're not hitting this. I might start considering changing it up, but I don't really want to do that yet. All right, real quick before giving up on this chatterbait, let me cast it over here for a second. We're on the other side of the dam. See some bluegills. Oh, what? Oh, I just had a nice bass, like, Sucked it in, spit it out. Shoot, that's nuts. That's freaking nuts. Came out of nowhere, dude. Nowhere. Right in front of my face. He's on it. Two, three fish. Yep, they're all right in front of me. Hang on. Got a bunch of bass here. It's always fun with light braid. Oh God, it's in the freaking tree. Oh my God, come on, dude. For real? Okay. I just lost a croc. Things are going swimmingly. Now it's up to my freaking fluoro. Gosh dang it, dude. What a tragedy I just had, you guys. Like, what the heck is going on with my life? Got him. Gil, oh, mega gill. Yo, that is a freaking tank of a gill, y'all. Wow, skinny but huge. This guy freaking ate it in the worst way possible. Holy cow. Got him. All right, we're gonna let this guy go because I've been holding him way too long. And he's good, he's back. All right. Hey, we got a bite. Look at that. Cast this puppy out here. And what I'm looking for is the kind of cover we're dealing with out there. So I wanna cast around this stuff. Okay, so it's a little deeper out there. Let's bring her in a bit more. Maybe the gain is too high. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Bring that gain down a lot. There we go, that clears it up. So looking at 10 feet zone. Still not seeing any fish. Unless they're sitting right off the bottom like you see there. Now the only other issue I've had is sometimes the screen freezes. Mostly when there's a big transition like you just saw from nine foot to four foot. Yeah, I think they're just suspending really low, just kind of hanging out. And you can't really see them through the cover, even if we go gain really high. Gain really high just makes the whole thing friggin' red. Let's keep trying this uh, square bill here. I'm gonna walk out to this other point, leave this here. Um, I'm gonna bring Chitty Chat. I'm gonna bring two extra lures here. Gonna hook them onto my GoPro. <laughs> GoPro double whammy. All right, this is uh, probably the first thing I caught on a friggin' Guggen micro bait, so that's a win. All right. Oh, that's gonna be thick stuff. Hang on. Oh, got him, got him. <laughs> Yo, even bigger than the last one. Are you freaking kidding me? Oh, this one was way easier to get free, so we can take a pick of this one. Even bigger than the last one. <laughs> Dang, man, they're liking this. Guggen micro bait, just kind of slow rolling this thing up to the weed edge and then just pausing it. 
and they're hitting it on that pause. You can also kind of twitch it. It sort of sinks. I got a little guy on it right now. It sort of sinks, that's weird. Maybe I did break this. Is that supposed to sink? I don't think I have too many sinking square bills. Doesn't seem to be holding any water. Doesn't seem to be broken. But look at this, ready? I'll show you around the rock. Hits the water, boom, it's sinking. This square bill sinks. Is that normal? Is that supposed to happen? I don't think so. So hey, we're learning lots of stuff today. We're learning about the striker cast, learning about the uh, issue with the Guggen micro baits. All right, so since we've determined that this crankbait sinks, I'm wondering if we switch out to the MEPS now. So MEPS should be a good multi-species targeter. This crankbait's dead to me. It did catch some fish though. Always a good sign. But this is my all-time favorite bait forever. And hopefully it doesn't let me down because I just talked it up. All right, let's go MEPS, let's go. Do your job. Don't make me look bad. Better start getting some hits. Did I get him? Got him. That's why we were losing him. Oh, it's, I mean, it's not like a terrible size. Ow. Not a terrible size. Little guy. Come on, guy. Oh, yo. That is a big dead bass. Holy crap. Dang, dude. Poor guy. R.I.P. Come on, man. Who killed that? Got him. That's bass. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, God. Pfft. Went for a run on me. Went for a run. Swiping again. That's what they were doing the other day. Here we go. No little dinky guy, but at least it's a bass. Right species that we were looking for. Bye, buddy. I mean, hell of a day so far for a very, very short trip. They're out there, you guys. Got them. Oh, wow. Crappie, yo, freaking tank, dude. Tank of a crappie, holy crap. You guys, check that out. Wow, nice. Love the little tuxedo, man. Let's let him go. Later, buddy. Oh, he's got like teeth marks on him and stuff. Nice, nice crappie. Multi-species day. Hey, what did I tell you guys about this MEPS? Getting some bites on the fall. Okay, that was about the best back cast mess up you can do. Check that out. I freaking hiked it. Hiked it. What they say about that midday MEPS, dude? It's a vibe. Got him. Yep, another bass. Probably best one of the day so far. Look at them freaking run for it, dude. They are just crazy. Swiped it. Definitely best fish today so far. Nice. Yeah. Meps, playing cleanup as per usual. Working our way back. Hoping I can get to that spot where I had the big bass watching me. Give me that big fish. Where is he at? This is the spot. Like just to our right here is where we were seeing all those bass. If we cast around them, should be able to get one. And I'm gonna have to start hiking out. Oh, got him, got him. Right at the shore. Oh, nice little largey. Yo, check that out. Again, not a giant, but gosh dang it, if it ain't fun, especially on that BFS, there we go. Let's get another good release here. Bye, buddy. Yo, there we go. That was one of them. All right, we're up to our spot here. Let's see if we can get one of those bass. That might have been one of them right there. Got him. That's the big one. That's the big one. Yup, 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 yup. Yep, that's the big one. Okay, baby. Okay, baby. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yep, that was the big one. Told you it was like a pound and a half or, again, not a giant, but that is the biggest one of the day right there. That was the one, she put up a freaking fight. Yes! Yes! 
I was the one that sniffed at my chatterbait, all my jerk baits, and my uh, that square bill. The good old sinking square bill, you know? My favorite. All right, you guys, final verdict that I'm gonna give this thing is it's all right. Um, not the biggest fan, and I'll tell you why. Specifically, it didn't have a lot of settings compared to like the Deeper Plus. So if you get the Deeper Plus, Deeper Plus Chirp, like all those things, uh, those models tend to have a lot more settings, a lot more things that you can do to make it easier to find fish. Plus, the Deeper Chirp was the only one I've tried that actually showed me fish, right? Which is kind of the point. So you could use this if you're looking to identify structure, depth, water temperature. I think it's great for that. You can find uh, holes and humps and variants in the, in the depth of the water, which is definitely crucial if you know how to read that when you're trying to identify where to find fish. So I think it's more of a finding where fish potentially are kind of device versus a show me the actual fish device, right? Uh, which is fine. I mean, that's considering it's a 179 price tag. It's like the middle uh, of the road, right? So you got like the deeper starts like a hundred bucks. Then you go up to the higher end models, they get over $200. Uh, most of them around 299, like the deeper pluses, even higher than that and the deeper chirp. Uh, but I would say this, this is just my opinion, take it or leave it. I would rather go with a deeper chirp, right? I, right now, I think it had the most settings, the most options. It definitely had a better view and showed me actual fish in the water. I could see the arches. I just couldn't see the arch. And I tried deep, I tried shallow, I tried drifting it. You can see the wind is still coming in. At this point, we walked all the way down there and all the way back. And I drifted it several times and it just didn't show me any fish. I couldn't see the arches, right? But that's fine. I mean, again, if you're on the market just for something out there and you have less than $200 to spend, I would go this over the deeper start all day if you can't afford the 299 price tag. Otherwise, I'd try to save up another 120 bucks and just go for that deeper chirp because I think that the deeper chirp is solid for the price point. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, be sure to subscribe, smash a like, ring the notification bell, and come back Thursdays 8 p.m. Eastern when we go live. I'd love to see you there and talk to you in chat. All right, I gotta hit it. So hope you guys are having a great day. I'll see you in the next video.